Hey, what's going on, y'all? It's your boy E2 Blue coming back at you again. Good morning, happy Tuesday morning. Um, first of all, I want to say a uh, shout out to Mark Holmes and Michael. Um, they're out there in Puerto Rico, as you guys know, right now doing um, hell of a community service work out there, helping rebuild houses from storms and things like that. Um, doing service for the community. See, that's what you want in your cowboy fans. You want your cowboy fans out here giving back to the community, doing good things, and. It shows that hey, cowboy fans are really, really truthful. And our YouTubers, we we are really about what we say. Um, shout out to Mark Holmes and Michael for that, for out there um, giving their time and energy and, and um, to help out with uh, the efforts in Puerto Rico. Um, I commend that all day. Um, <clears throat> and I'm pretty sure he's got some good shots out there of the scenery and um, the beautiful landscapes and things of the coastline out there in Puerto Rico, but shout out to him for that. Um, as far as our Dallas Cowboys, guys, um, OTA start to, I mean, not OTAs, uh, mini camp starts today, guys, um, as they wrapped up OTAs last week, their two-week OTAs, um, they're heading into the, the, um, the three-day mini camp starting today, um, and after mini camp, guys, they have literally a, a break until they come back for training camp. Now, during that time, I'm normally like, uh, don't get in trouble, you know, because Fourth of July weekend is coming up, you know, for those guys that, you know, that's when they take their break. So, you remember what happened to um, <laughs> Jason Pierre Paul when he blew off his fingers? Now, I don't think our Dallas Cowboys are going to do anything that that asinine, but I look at it like this: um, stay out of trouble, Zeke. Zeke, stay, y'all, chill out, y'all. Stay out of TMZ. Don't go to Florida. That's one. Don't go to Florida. Don't matter of fact, don't even sniff Florida. Stay stay away from Florida, uh, Cowboy players. Um, just chill out. Get your playbook. Get ready for training camp. And man, let's get this season started, man, so we can make it to the Super Bowl possibly. You know, normally I don't normally ever say that, but I just feel like this year has a different air to it. I feel like it it just has a different feeling and um I'm all for it, y'all. Straight up. Um what I wanted to talk about this morning is uh, George Iloka. Now, a lot of people have been writing George Iloka off. When he got signed with the Cowboys in uh, free agency, a lot of people were like, I got George Iloka. What y'all get him for? We didn't get everybody, you know, was butthurt because we didn't get Earl Thomas and we lost him to the Ravens. Now, the Ravens spent a lot of money on him. The Cowboys were not doing that, nor did they have the, um, the space to do that in. Because they, they know who they had to sign primarily. So we already know that it, that wasn't going to happen. Now, you look at um, George Iloka. Just taking a look at George Iloka. All right. So a lot of you that say he's trash, he sucks, and this and that, blah, blah, blah. But he's a, journey, he's a journeyman. He's a veteran guy. He's been in his league seven years. Um, he's had 79 career starts between the Minnesota Vikings and um, the team that he got drafted with, the Bengals. Now, you look at the Bengals. He spent most of his time next. I think he was only with the Vikings for a year. Now, his production with the Vikings wasn't great only because they played him all the way out of the scheme. Now, again, players, you got to understand that, like, depending on the scheme fit for the player depends on how they play. Because, again, you have to play within the scheme. It's not like you're just out there freestyling. This ain't flag football. This ain't um, street football. You're not out there just, just doing what you want to do. This is the reason why they have schemes. And, you know, like I pretty much with the Vikings, he was a part-time player. So he really didn't have the opportunities like that. But with the Bengals, he had a pretty decent um, career. So some of his stats with the Bengals. Um, so in 2014, he had 79 tackles. He had three interceptions and 10 pass breakups in 2014. Um, follow that up in 2016, 73 tackles, three interceptions, and seven pass breakups. Now, that's not bad for um, a guy that, you know, mind you, these are his stats when he was with the Bengals. Now, you look at what he did with the Bengals, and um, he wasn't a bad player. <coughs> I went back and looked at some of his games and some of his highlights. Like, the way that you play George Aloka, and they interviewed him with the Cowboys, of course, um, asked him what his expectations were with the Dallas Cowboys. He basically said that, hey, um, I just want this to be the best um, of my career. And, you know, of course, players are going to say that they're supposed to say that. But I think that this scheme is perfect for George Iloka because the way that he plays, he's a strong safety. And if they play him in the box, 
um, similar to kind of like how they did Barry Church. Remember how solid Barry Church was? He was still making plays, but he also had a um, averaged about uh, 68 to 70, 72 tackles a season. Because again, you look at that position where he is, he's coming down in the box, basically like an extra um, linebacker. Coming to the line of scrimmage, helping out with the coverage on the um, tight ends and, and, and the running backs running free. So you look at George Aloka and what he brings to the table. I think that, um, well, that he's definitely going to make the team. But right now they have Jeff Heath and Xavier Woods. They, they've been the starters for the, for the team for the last couple of years. Now, um, he can push for that starter position to take Jeff Heath's spot. Now, I would kind of like that only because I want Jeff Heath kind of playing a little bit less because Jeff Heath's production is better when he's not a full-time starter. Let me repeat that. Jeff Heath's production is much better when he's not playing full-time. You got him playing maybe like 65% of the snaps, and then he also plays special teams as well. So you look at that. If you have George Aloka starting and you just, you know, rotate these guys in, I'm telling you, the production is going to be much better. George Aloka can make plays. He's a sure tackler. And and this is the reason why you play him in the line down in a, in a box and close to the line of scrimmage. You 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 add you provide that help with the linebackers, him with Jalen Smith and 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 the Wolf man, um Leighton Van Der Esch out there making these tackles. I'm telling you, um um it's going to be so much pro productive um for this team. And I think that George Aloka definitely can bring that. I think that he can um, use that, and he actually can make more plays. Now, what he said himself right now, he knows the defense right now, but it's the comfort factor that he has to get um, dealt with, which is cool because every player that comes to a new team, I'm pretty sure that um, Robert Quinn is going through this right now, Christian Covington, Kerry Hyder, um, Randall Cobb. They're all getting acclimated and getting comfortable with the team. It's a comfort thing. You, you, you're a veteran. You're coming from another team. You're coming into a new scheme. You may love this scheme, which a lot of the guys that just that are coming to this team now are loving the scheme right now, which is great. Um, but again, uh, <clears throat> George Aloka fits that bill right now. He's 6'4", 225 pounds. He's that prototype um, safety that Chris Richard has been jumping on the table for. So, like I said, those of you that think that he's trash and he sucks and this and that, I guarantee you he's going to have a much better season with the Dallas Cowboys than he's had um, in the past season because the scheme fit that the Cowboys are running right now uh, with primarily playing um, um, nickel and dime, I'm telling you, I'm, this team will definitely... Um, I think I, I'm pretty sure that he'll play much better with the Dallas Cowboys because it, it fits him well. He even said it himself. Um, again, it's all about that comfort. And again, we haven't even gotten to training camp yet. Now he's gonna get some more snaps in mini camp. I mean, in um, yeah, mini camp this week. And um, also, when training camp comes, I think that by the time you get halfway through that month long journey of training camp, the guys start to, that that comfort builds in, and then it's more of you have the knowledge. But once you get to the point where you can play without thinking and you could just react, you're a much better player. And that's with any player. When when you're not running around the field thinking about what you're supposed to be doing and trying to figure out where you got to be at on the field 24-7, you play much better naturally. So um, I got – I'm not going to say I have high hopes for George Iloka, but I have – but I will say that – he will make a difference in this defense. It's not like he's just going to be, he's not another camp body. He's a veteran guy. He's, he's done some things in his league. Um, I, I don't think Darian Thompson is going to make the team. Obviously um, they could put him on a practice squad, but there's a lot of defensive guys that they're probably going to put out there anyway. So I look at, I look at it like uh, a lot of the, these defensive linemen that they can't because we're, we're stacked at defensive line. So a lot of those guys are probably going to go on a practice squad that, that show and prove this, this offseason. So um, it's going to be some players um, left on the street that uh, that get cut that are actually decent players. But we'll see what happens. It's going to be interesting when we see this team cut down to 53. Now, that's all I got for right now. Um, guys, um, let me know what you guys think about George Iloka. But, again, I've, I've heard some of you guys say when he got signed that you guys hated the sign and this and that. But 
telling you, it's not as bad as you think it is. He's definitely going to be a player that's, that's solid. That's, he's a solid player that's going to come in here and um, provide some depth and production for this team. So hopefully he can um, get that starter spot. Um, that way he can just interchange with Jeff Heath. Like, just because you're the starter doesn't mean that Jeff Heath is not going to play. Um, I want them to um, interchangeably, you know, rotate those guys in and out um, for that strong safety position because, again, um, both of these guys can make plays when needed. So let's let's get it done. So I'll be watching out for George Aloka in training camp, see how he does, see how he gets his comfort level. Like I said, he said he knows the defense. It's just about him getting comfortable. And that's just with any other free agent that's on this team now that came from another team. It's all about the comfort. But looking at these guys in practice and some of the tape, um, they seem to be playing pretty well. And um, I, I know it's just – they're not in pads yet, but um, they seem to be flying around the field and doing some things. Now, one thing I would say that this team has gotten better with their speed this year. So they're going to be moving and jucking and jiving and, and doing a damn thing this year. But that's all I got for right now, guys. Um, it's your boy E2 Blue, always keeping it real. Um, thanks again, all my subscribers. I appreciate y'all so all your support. Um, if you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, that notification bell, so you get this content. Um, it's your boy E2 Blue, always keeping it real. Y'all have a great Tuesday.